Hello everybody, let's do a run cycle. Uh, I'm going to do most of the animations off screen, but I figured I'd show you the run cycle here on screen because the run cycle is a foundation skill, uh, the walk cycle as well. You should really know how to do them if you have any interest in animation at all. Now you can actually get away with having uh, packaged mechanim animations uh, if you use packaged mechanim characters, but in this case uh, not only do I want to make it myself so I can distribute it, but I also don't have a packaged mechanim character. I've got uh, a character that doesn't have proper mechanim jointing. Anyway, if you are going to be doing a run cycle I, or walk cycle, I strongly recommend going on Google and finding a reference. I happen to have the book that this is a reference from, um, although online I found it at renderography.com. I don't have the rights to redistribute this, and I don't think they do either, uh, but you can find very similar things on Google. This is a six frame walk cycle, so one, two, three, four. Each of these frames is. Um, oh, try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the next step starts. So that's a decent way to think about it. We've got six frames per step, and uh, we can actually build our entire animation around that idea, although we should probably expand it a little bit. We can always adjust the timing later if we have to. So here's my character in a pose that I just started with there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start our animation. I have this up, I have the reference up in the other window, but we're going to be referring back to it just a couple of times so I can show you what I'm doing. This first step, uh, there are a couple of points of uh, notable interest. This is where the leg comes and hits the ground, and the whole body is tilted towards that leg. In addition, the arm on that side should be twisted backwards so that you get uh, the shoulder should be should be rolling behind so that you get a good feel. Now this is obviously a very cartoony step, but that's fine. We can adapt it without any real issue. So this will be the leg that is just about to hit the ground, or rather it has hit the ground. And since it's about to hit the ground, we need to pull this down and clunk like this. Now how aggressive you'd like your run to be is obviously completely a matter of your personal preferences uh, and of course the character. But for now, let's go ahead and rotate this down and we're also going to rotate it on the z-axis so that we are facing our leg, like so. I moved it a little bit too far down, didn't I? And now this leg is going to be back and in its I'm done running pose like this. Uh, the legs are not properly aligned with the ground, so let's fix that. Like this, more or less. So the key here is that this shoulder should fall behind this hip if possible. Uh, if you're leaning forward, I'm, I'm talking about like this view here. So if you're leaning forward, you wouldn't you wouldn't need to roll even further. You would just well, you might. It depends on really what you want to do. But that means that we're going to twist this torso like this, and of course twist the neck back. These arms, these shoulders can be twisted forward. This is the clavicle. Uh, it's up to you how you want to animate the character, uh, whether you like to animate with a clavicle-centric approach or a shoulder-centric approach or what. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use both bones because, hey, why not? It does mean that we won't be able to remap it very easily since both of those bones are not mechanim bones. Now, our character will be holding something heavy, um, so we have to be a little bit careful how we animate our arms, but uh, the basic idea is that uh, we want the arms to run counter to the legs, although technically speaking they are actually running um, about a sixth of a step behind the arms, which we'll get to in a little bit of time later. There we go. There is our first frame, and it looks decent enough. Uh, we can bend her forward, but I actually don't want to because if she's about to strike, I don't want her to um, have to wobble a lot. The strikes are going to be very spine heavy, and I don't want the animations fighting so we're going to leave her running animation a little bit spineless. We're doing location rotation, not location rotation scale, because uh, we may actually scale the bones up or down at a later date. Oh, and we are not quite close enough to the ground, because this should be an actual contact point like this. 
So we now need to duplicate this uh, key here and put it over here somewhere. Where do we want to put it? Well, if each of these takes six frames, uh, then somewhere over here should be more or less right. We can always move it later. So here at frame seven, we want to have the opposite, where this leg is the one that's behind and all the, all the stuff has been rotated in the other direction. Let's go ahead and start with the body so that we have this rotation here. And then this leg will come forward like this. And you can see that our legs are getting wrapped up funny. So you wanted to definitely go in and fix that. You can always hit Alt-R to reset any given bone, and that'll be a handy thing you can do to keep yourself uh, from being confused. So there's our contact point. Now in 2D animation, one of the basic uh, arguments is that you should never have both steps of the running cycle have the same side silhouette, or, or profile in general. Uh, and we're definitely going to be uh, going along with that although it's not terribly critical for our um, 3D animations it does make it feel a little bit more organic plus we're likely to be holding something heavy in our right hand and not in our left hand now we're about to run into a very interesting bug here in um, uh, here in Blender. So uh, don't be surprised when everything falls apart. And that's because Blender's not a very good program. It's, it's decent enough, but it's got some very, very serious bugs that they never seem to fix. Sounds like there's going to be a little bit of noise on my side, so maybe I'll just mute this. Um, how do I mute it? I wonder what sort of awful noise that made. All right, so now we have uh, our two primary frames where we have this step and then this step, and there goes all of her feet. Um, and that's the problem that Blender has. It randomly disintegrates. Uh, so I know that everyone really likes that feature, but if uh, the Blender devs could fix that, I would be very happy. Anyhow, if you get that bug, the thing you have to be careful of is do not save the file while that bug is happening. If you save the file here, for example, then in Unity all of those pieces will be stuck wherever the hell they floated off to. So always save it like this. Um, other than that, it doesn't actually interfere with our process much except for making it hard to tell exactly how high off the ground a given foot is. Um, so here we have a basic run cycle, and uh, I screwed up the arms here. As you can see, they are not uh, quite right. So let's pull this forward and up. Now, running is, uh, we're going to be animating the fingers of the hand um, separately from, uh, from the rest of this animation. We're going to mask in a second layer of animation to, uh, to, do the, to be the fingers. But we do want to make sure that the hands themselves are animated here and they're animated properly. And what properly means in this case is lagging behind the rest of the motion. And that way we can get the heavy uh, weapons that they're carrying around the swords or whatever to feel heavy. Uh, if you don't do this, then they will feel like they weigh nothing because they're not being powered along by the arm. They're just stuck to the arm like a giant piece of styrofoam. That's why the weapons in Mass Effect look so cheap. Uh, they didn't they didn't have any weight to them because this, the animators didn't put any weight into the animation. And then here, we actually forgot to do that, so let's go ahead and put those in. And it's going to be lagging behind and... lagging behind. There we are. And now that, that's probably the last time that we're going to do a um, a full body frame. Probably most of the rest, well, maybe we'll do the in-betweener, the in the uh, passing frames like that too. I'll, t I'll talk about what I mean a little bit later about that. Uh, we are now into the next section, so we've got the outlying frames. We did this frame, 
and we did this frame, and then we repeated this frame over there somewhere. Now it's time to do this red frame, which is the passing position. It's called the passing position because in walking, this is actually where the legs pass, but in running, you can see that that's just not what happens. Uh, now this part of the body, this is when the first part, portion of the run is when the body swings around. Uh, so this is the portion where the shoulders are in their most active, like I'm going to move around sort of state, and then the arms follow the shoulders a little bit behind. Uh, so let's take a look at our animation here. You can see that here it very much looks like a passing state because our legs are in fact passing each other, but that's just because we haven't animated it properly yet. Uh, so our left leg is driving backwards, but it's actually going to be uh, significantly more successful than that. It's going to have driven backwards like this and be just pushing off the ground when we reach it. So um, that's going to be a useful way for us to... Uh, that's the right leg. No, that's the left leg. You just crossed over because I'm a klutz. Yep. So something like that. And then this leg is coming forward, like so. Unfortunately, I'm looking at the shoes and I'm thinking, that shoes, those shoes don't make any sense. Yeah, they don't make any sense because there's a bug in Blender. Uh, anyhow, it's time for us to move the, um, move the frame of the body up so that the toes are just in contact with the ground, like this. And I'm going by the bone, obviously, since the shoe is worthless. Uh, and the whole body it has started to rotate in the opposite direction. Now, it's actually been tweened, so that the spine is more or less straight at this point, because the spine is twisted one way in the earlier frame and the other way in the later frame, and we're halfway, halfway between them. But what hasn't been properly tweened is that we need to push the shoulders around faster than the rest of the body. And as you might recall, uh, let's go ahead and just insert all of these uh, as a frame here. We start with the shoulders like this, and then they're starting to come forward, but they need to come forward quite a bit more than that. So we're going to go ahead and rotate Z, this, and we're also going to take advantage of these bones here. You notice that we need to do a little bit of reweighting on the tunic and a couple of other details. Um, that's fine. It's a matter of detail work. So the arms that we're seeing here are actually far in advance of where they should be. Uh, if we look at the reference, you can see that the arms come swinging around, but here this is a very cartoony place for them to be. Uh, as you can see, they get a whole lot more exaggerated. So the arms should be only slightly in advance of where they uh, of of our uh, preferred position, and that means that uh, this arm should be like this because it's coming forward. I need this hand to be rotated. The reason I'm rotating the hand is so that whatever we're holding doesn't slash us across the uh, hip. And then this needs to come in, but it's more or less in the right spot. And of course, the arm needs to be the hand needs to be dragging behind like this. All right. So we'll just insert that as its own frame, and then we'll go on to the next step, and we want the exact same situation, except it's obviously the other leg. I'm going to have to mute again here.
Sorry, for some reason everyone seems like uh, they really, really, really want to use the noisy appliances directly outside of my door, uh, even though it's nowhere near being an actual time to eat or anything like that. <sighs> Alright, so I think that I accidentally got these arms backwards, didn't I? So this one's the arm coming forward. Yeah, I did. I got them backwards because I'm not very bright today. There we go. And uh, it might be best to bring this arm in a little bit, like so. Perfect. So now we have a rudimentary running animation. Now it's missing uh, quite a few frames, but let's go ahead and save it and then load it up in Unity and see how it looks. I've added in a stick, which is basically going to serve as our sword proxy. And that way we'll be able to see how it looks when she's running around with a weapon in her hand. Grind, 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 grind. Um, hold on. God damn it. I really hate how they randomly start up... It, it's a very unreliable way of naming these things. Half the time they get named, they switch between them arbitrarily, and when you delete them they don't actually get deleted. Well, whatever. You can make it work if you're patient and sometimes reload the file. So, now, if we were to go into our... I've, I've renamed it Hero one because we're starting over. You can see that Forward and Walk are, are both available to us. Uh, and in this case, Forward actually is not the same length. So let's go ahead and delete this... or uh, reset this Forward here. You can see how it goes from 0 to 11. Uh, that's actually frames local to the animation. So in our case, we would go from 1 to 12. So 0 to 11 is one frame short, and that's on purpose, because this is actually a duplicate frame. It's the first frame again. So you have to manually edit that frame out, which I already did uh, while I was testing, and I forgot to reset it. I've also baked and looped everything. Let's go over and take a look. That is not the animation I expected you to have. Let's go look at our animator. For some reason, it's giving me a weird error, so let's take a look here. Drop it in, see what we can do with that now. Don't know what's up with that, but that's okay. So you can see that she's got a very fast run cycle at this point. Um, and her feet are not in precisely the right location. Now we're going to be spending most of our time staring at her from this angle, um, which is why I've left this camera so much larger than her. And uh, you can see how the importance of, uh, in the run cycle, the importance of the shoulders from this angle, because the shoulders are the most notable pieces of this puzzle. So with that in mind, let's move on to the in-betweeners, uh, the pieces that aren't going to be uh, core keyframes. But it's going to get noisy again, so I'm muting me again. Okay, so this frame is the key frame for giving your character a feeling of weight, because everything else is all just either floating or whatever, but this is the frame where your character goes, oh, okay, uh, I have to actually have a sense of mass, and I'm pushing down into the ground. This is also the first frame where it's critically important that uh, we only insert the bone animations we actually change. 
we do not want to insert all of the bone animations like we have been doing. And the reason for that is because if we change any of the bone animations anywhere else, we, we want the tweening to be proper. Otherwise, the tweening will be upset. So for example, later on, if we decide we need, she needs to swing her arms better or differently, it would be a shame if we changed some bones and then they were locked into the wrong position here. We had to go through and manually change them in each frame and be like, is this right? eyeballing it. It's a pain in the ass. The other thing this frame is known for is having the most extended arms, but in our case it's actually not going to be that that serious. The key to us is that these this is the frame where the hands change sides in terms of whether they're leading or following. Because the arms have stopped and so the weapons haven't stopped. They'll continue. Therefore our hands also continue, like so. And uh, this uh, could be used a little bit of adjustment, so insert, uh, and we did the arms and the hands, so insert location rotation and insert location rotation. Although location isn't necessary either because we're not doing anything location based. So what we see here is stunk, stunk. We don't actually drop enough here or rather we drop too much here. So let's go back over into this guy and raise this frame up just a little bit so that we can get a sense of dropping in the next frame. And then bring this foot down like so. And since this is a reference frame, we also have to duplicate it and put it at the end. So now it goes dunk. We have that downward sense of pressure. Of course, in the next frame, it all slides away awkwardly uh, and we'll have to deal with that but uh, for now we need to repeat this process for the other frame and that means that we want this frame oh it's noisy again The basic principle is to um, use the utensils directly outside of my room whenever I am recording, and otherwise use them uh, the actual kitchen. <laughs> Whatever. So we've just changed it so that it pushes down, and now it's time for us to uh, bring the hands around. Come on, hands. And you can see how we're naturally getting um, just a very slightly girlish run because her arms are in a kind of a Kimbo position. But that should be fine. It'll keep her from accidentally banging any armor uh, around her hips that she might have. Did I just screw that up? I did. I just screwed that whole thing up. God damn it. Uh, I accidentally edited the frame that I'd already created rather than the frame I was supposed to be editing. So that was a mistake. Let's try that again, this time without the stupid. Okay, and this is a little bit too far forward. Let's just move there. Now we do want to bring the whole frame down a bit, if we can. I use too many too many words frame means too many different things. All right, there we are. And now we can properly And of course, I want to exaggerate the arms a little bit because this is where they are actually at their widest. So stomp, dash, stomp. Okay, so that stomp doesn't exist. We need to bring her down more, uh, which means that we probably need to actually raise her up on this frame. So same problem we had on the other side. 
these frames are too low to the ground. Alright, so we now have the correct sense here. And we've got some good stomping going on. So what else is left? We have two more frames to draw. Uh, we have the um, uh, we had we just did this frame, and now we have the high frame, the high frame for each of these legs, and that will make our uh, our character actually look like they are in the air here, uh, rather than being about to just kind of be off the ground. It'll give us a so push off, and they'll have a strong push off sensation here. So we go from pushing off to being way in the sky, and that's what we're going to draw now. So this needs to be, uh, we're no longer anywhere near the contact point, so we need to have this be uh, more like this, and then this should have the leg up like this. Now we don't actually have any interest in um, changing the arms or anything like that because they are probably tweening properly. But let's go ahead and bring the character up just a notch. Tick, tick, there we are. So now when we have that jump, it doesn't actually go up, so let's bring up another notch. Tick. Jump up and then down, see? So you got the jump, down. And we're going to do the same thing over here, where we uh, go from having pushed off to in the air. And of course we want that same So now it's douche. No, that's not not high enough in the air. There we go. All right. So that should be complete. Let's go back to where the feet aren't falling off and save it, and then go over into Unity and hit play and see what happens. Now this took me half an hour to do, and uh, I imagine that if it's your first time, it'll take you a lot longer. Run cycles are probably the longest things that you have to animate in the game. Uh, you may notice that we didn't actually animate these ones that are marked in between. That's because uh, those tween fine. We don't really have to worry about them. Uh, we can put it in if we would like to, if there's some sort of decorative animations we want to put in. So we've got a character that runs along, and you can see that her sword tip just jolts around like like mad there. Uh, so in the long run, what I'll probably do is I will edit the uh, animation so that the sword tip swings in a very nice circular pattern, just a nice circle, rather than this rectangle that we've got going right now. But I don't feel like doing that at the moment. I'll do it uh, at a later time. The key here is what does it look like from the back? Let's go ahead and grab the character and spin her around so that we can see sunlight on her back. So you can see that that's a relatively decent looking animation from the back. Uh, the arms are a little bit too rigid. They probably need to flop a little bit more. Uh, I'm talking about the upper arms. The biceps are held at the same angle throughout. Uh, and those sorts of things can be changed. Now the great thing about the way we did this is that we left uh, all of the pieces that we weren't sure about out of the equation. And that means that we don't have them tweened here in the animation. So if we were to go over there, come on. If we were to go down to the arm, here it is, you can see how there is no arm uh, keyframe here or here, and that means that they will continue just to tween nicely. Uh, but we do have to figure out how we want the arms to look. So if we go to behind here, control, control one, there it is, uh, and we look at our animation from behind, you can see how the, the frame comes out fine there and then there, 
and then by this time they're starting to get a little bit stale and then they're really stale so here let's take this frame and let's exaggerate the arm a little bit more and of course we're gonna have to repeat the process on the opposing frame So now the forearm feels really rigid, doesn't it? Here it feels really stale, so let's bring the forearm in. And let's bring the forearm out. There we go. Although I think I just did that backwards. Let's bring the forearm in here and out here. And let's see how that looks. I think that looks fine, so let's repeat the process. So we brought it out and in, so now we need to bring it in and out. And then we bring it back so that our feet aren't falling off, and we hit save. And uh, now that little decoration, that little change I made, was just to show you that we didn't have to edit the in-between frames if we don't set those frames up with that bone. So I just edited those, those upper arm and forearm motions, and I'm relying on the fact that there is no set animation for them between the frames we edited. That's a little bit better. It's not perfect yet. Uh, so you can spend all day editing run cycles, and you really should. Um, run cycles are a foundation skill, and everything in the game is going to run. One of the things that uh, is wrong with this particular run cycle is that the back is very, very stiff so we can edit that as well. There's a lot of little changes we can make. I'm going to go ahead and stop here though because it's been 32 minutes and uh, I'll, by the time this is released all of the other animations will be complete and I'll put them in the file. Now if you create animations that are better than mine uh, I am perfectly happy to put them in the game. Uh, just uh, you know, send me the Blender file with those animations if you feel like you want to. Uh, you don't have to. And of course, if you like my animations well enough, you can use them. The sword has a has a physics attached. <laughs> All right, that's it. Have a good day.